Welcome to my mitten adventure. I just showed you the cast on, but what I didn't show you was the swatching method I used. This is my Inca Trail beanie that I designed for my Knit Stars piece this year. And uh, what I've done is use this for my tension swatch. And to my mind, this is a perfectly legitimate way of swatching. Uh, this is knit with the same yarn and the same, I know what needle size I used. So I took my my wrist and folded this around and worked out how many repeats I've got. So I've got one, two, three, four, five uh, repeats and those are eight stitch repeats. That's five stitches and three. So five eight stitch repeats is 40. And because I want my cuff a little bit snugger than that, I'm going down a needle size. And with it being double knit, I have no problem with elasticity. So 40 pairs of stitches on one needle size smaller should give me the perfectly sized cuff. I'm going to restrain myself and do a simple patterned cuff um, and not do these reverse stocking stitch welts. My inner knitter immediately wants to do a more fancy cuff, but my aim for these mittens is to make them accessible and easy to knit, not too complicated. So let's see if I can stick to that. I started knitting last night, alternating the colours and thought, I'll demonstrate a colour change. However, when I picked up the knitting, I wasn't quite at the right point to show a colour change. So I thought, right, uh, I seem to recall that I had put my light green in my right hand, so bright in the right. Uh, but when we get to these two colours, it's not so clear. And I thought, well, you know, I actually, perhaps I did have the red in my right hand. So I looked at the knitting and the knitting actually tells you which one is which. And this is the reason I'm particular about this. You can see on that last round, I had my red in my right hand. And I was convinced that I'd made the decision to put the green in the right hand. So when I come to analyze this, and this is why I like to be particular, uh, you can see that everywhere that the colors have crossed, up to this point, they've crossed evenly. Um, green, red, green, red. But because I evidently switched hands late last night, and you can see the evenness has stopped because there's actually two bits of green here. So it goes green, red, green, red, green, red, and then it goes green, green, red. So that means that perhaps at the last color change, I put my red in my right hand and my green in my left, and it resulted in instead of an even weave uh, coming out with two the same color, one on top of the other. Really, it's not a huge deal, but especially in vertical lines, it can make them look less neat. So I'm actually going to take that back until I get back to um, wherever I was and wherever I made that switch. So, take out a couple of needles. And with double knitting, you've got to be careful to keep the pairs sorted out. So, here's my back stitch and my front. And back and front. I'm not worried about the stitch mount. So, in fact, I'm putting my far stitches on with normal mount and my near stitches on with unconventional, which is actually the opposite to what I normally experience. And I'm also keeping my eye on the point at which the red yarn crosses over. And if we look at this from above, you can see that the red very clearly goes zigzag, zigzag. Since the red is still evidently on top at this point, that tells me I've got at least one more round to go. So I'm going to take all the needles out and pull that back. If you want a more safety first approach to picking back, 
you can leave the stitches on the needles. You can leave the stitches on the needles and go into the back stitch, release it, into the front stitch, release it. However, to go a couple of rounds this way is very slow indeed. So here we go. And now I'm going to gently ravel back until I can find the spot where I changed, I switched hands. And here it is. So I went from greens on top there to reds on top after that point. So I need to go all the way back to here. So I can start picking up these stitches where it's green on top. I need to make sure I get the proper pairs. So it's this one and this one. I'm going to pick these up until I get back all the way round. Here's a spot where I've actually lost that row. So what I'm going to do is just pick up the underneath stitch and attend to it when I get there. Uh, if I split a ply or anything, I'm not too worried. Um, and now I'm going to keep on going back, actually popping them just before I knit them up. So pop them. And knit them up. When picking back in double knitting, another thing you need to pay attention to is that they're pulling out at the same rate. I do, even despite the alternative purl, use slightly more yarn in my left hand and um, I think I just don't control the tension quite as well so I have to make sure that one layer is not getting ahead of the other and there's another one of those dropped layers so I believe I'm back to where the green was in my right hand so here is where I made that mistake and my first round after picking back needs to be done very carefully. Uh, so here there's a stitch that went down to the row below. So I'm just going to pick that up and redo it. And now I can knit that green in my right hand alternative purl. Here's a split ply and strangely mounted knit, but I'm correcting that. And each stitch I'm checking it to make sure we've got near and far and and you can see here that I actually have a slight raised effect. Um, my red stitches are a little bit bigger than my green and that I think is quite possibly to do well it could be, it could be a slight thickness difference between the two yarns but I also believe it's that I'm slightly looser with my left hand even despite using alternative rotation purl in regular patterned double knitting it hardly shows at all but with stripes it does reveal the difference So our next thrilling instalment will have to be the colour changes, but that's enough for now.